quite a moving ceremony yesterday in honor of the late president of the Jamaica Football Federation, uh, my good friend, Captain Horace Burrell. Um, I, I've said before, I never always agreed with everything he did, but we were friends. We were friends from, for many, many years, even before I was a part of the national uh, coaching staff. I, I served under three different presidents. Um, he became president in 1994 and I was an national coach at the time and I was asked to stay when um, technical director Rene Simois came to Jamaica. Um, and he was the leader then until I retired or resigned, I shouldn't say retired, resigned as a national coach back in 1999. You know what, I think um, civil society needs people like Captain Burrell um, to have a fixity of purpose. You know, I'm going to get this done. Um, some, you're not perfect. Some things are not going to be great. Some things people may not agree. And, and in fact, he and I had that conversation. I said, you used to take a stance where I'm going to get this done regardless of whether they love me or not. Yeah. I said, when you started becoming concerned about what people think, and then, you know, you know, thinking, well, maybe I should. And then it didn't work. The same people them turn around and say, Captain, I know him, I do. But let me tell you, an uh, inspiring person to know. Yeah, very confident, man. Very, mm -hmm. um, some people say braggadocious, very aggressive. That's all right. And went after what he wanted. Got it done. And for the most part, got what he wanted. Got it done. And, um, oh, man, I saw, I didn't see all of it. I saw Ashes rise up. Tribute. I was like, this is awesome. A lot of musical tributes. Yeah, lots of, um, lots of, a lot of dignitaries yeah. were there. So it was a long ceremony, but a lot so. of um, I was talking and um, the former prime ministers and the present prime minister, the governor general, as I said, the technical director, former technical director, and his very good friend, Rene Simoes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as we said, Coach Simoes is already here and we will speak with him later on. But my good friend, yeah. Rest in peace. And the entrepreneur, businessman, yeah. Captain's Bakery. All right. Um, $15 million fire damage mm. at uh, Bahia. Mm -hmm. um, that's in Runaway Bay, St. Anne. Yesterday morning, good news is no one was injured in the fire. It started after 2 a.m. Wednesday. Um, and it was brought under control just after 4 a.m. So that was good work by uh, the fire department. Yeah. But, they said three units responded, Brownstown and St. Anne's Bay. But here, man, I don't know. You guys just can't get a break mm -hmm. at that resort. Um, just a string of things happening, and I, and, I, and I really hope that, you know, it just breaks and stops and that you guys can just continue to get on with the business of, of tourism yep. and getting people here to Jamaica. I don't know. 15 million, they, it's, it's one of the largest hotels in Jamaica. Neville, the damaged area is said to have been used to store several items, including chemicals, which is probably why well, the fire, fire. Um, yeah. got under yeah. control the way it did. As I said, good news is that uh, we didn't lose any lives, and yeah. hopefully they'll be, as Delia said, back on their feet again pretty mm. soon. Mm. Cardinal George Pell, when I looked down, I thought it said Bell, but it said Pell, <laughs> who's <laughs> a senior advisor to Pope Francis and the Vatican treasurer is uh, taking leave from the Vatican um, to fight sexual assault charges in, in his home country, Australia. Mm. Um, this has been going on with the Catholic Church for a while. It's the latest black mark against the Catholic Church. Australian police have not received, released a detailed list of charges against Cardinal Pell. Um, didn't in, in disclose any information about the victims, saying only that there were multiple charges and multiple complainants which is certainly not good news. Mm. So he's going to have to appear in court on July 18. Mm. And apparently that's when a full charge list is expected. Um, to Red, he says yeah. he's innocent of the charges, they're false. And the whole idea of sexual abuse is a bar to him. Yep. Um, I, I know this Pope takes it very seriously. seriously. Yeah. And so they're saying, um, the fact that he counts Pell as among his closest aides uh, really is going to be mm -hmm. something he has to deal with yep. at his level. But, wow. Let's follow this one now. Yep. What's Let's the last one? Ink 
incredible tattoos on earlobes. They're the latest trend to sweep social media. And there are different, you know, there is a different array of designs to suit everybody. Body art enthusiasts have been taken to Instagram to show their new tattoos using, using hashtags. Now, let me tell you something. If anyone has ever pierced their ear, which is a one-time and it's painful. I don't know about sitting down for somebody poke my ears several times. Never. So? Well, as, as, as somebody who has tattoos. I have a tattoo. Some of them painful and some not. Depends on where you get That's it. That's why I'm saying the ear alone, yeah. though, because if your ear is... Didn't your ear your, your, your hurt when you pierce mm -hmm. it? Yeah, it's painful. Yeah. So why am I going to make somebody... And then put something here. I mean, I tattoo elsewhere that you cover up when you're ready or so it's fine. Yeah. But if I put it on my ears and then three days later, I'm going to say, you know, you know I'm not like that thing, yeah? What am I going to do? Cut up your ears. 